multimeter is the most common and versatile tool you'll use doing DIY projects. Multimeters are most commonly used to check voltage, resistance, current, and continuity. All multimeters will come with at least two probes, a red one and a black one. The black one will always be plugged into the common port on the multimeter, and the red one will be plugged into voltage and resistance, and in some cases, if there's an amperage port, it'll be plugged into there. Now, you also need to pay attention to where the red probe is plugged into, because you never want to have it plugged into voltage and resistance, and then check amperage. You could blow a circuit inside your multimeter. So what do the symbols on the front of the multimeter mean? Well, here's the V with a dash or dotted line, and that stands for direct current, or DC. This would be used to check batteries. So let's do that. To check this battery, we know it's 9 volts, so that's under 20. So we'll set our meter to 20. We'll take the black probe, or negative probe, and touch it to the negative contact on the battery, and touch the red, or positive probe, to the positive contact on the battery. It won't hurt anything to reverse the leads. You'll see a negative number, but this is also a good way to check polarity to find out which is the positive and which is the negative side of a battery. The V with the squiggly line stands for alternating current, or AC. This would be the voltage flowing through your home. So we'll set our multimeter to 200 volts because we're gonna check our wall outlet and we know that it's 120 volts and we'll insert our probes into the outlet. Now, as long as the probes don't touch each other, this is perfectly safe, and we can see our rating on our multimeter. As soon as we get it plugged in properly, we're getting just about 120 volts out of this outlet. The next selection is for ohms, and we see our little ohm symbol there, and this multimeter goes from 200 ohms to 20 mega ohms. Now we can check a lot of things for resistance. For example, your skin has resistance. And of course, resistors have resistance. This is a 47K ohm resistor. And you can check resistance on a speaker. In this case, it's an eight ohm speaker. So we'll check the resistance of this. And as you can see, it's not quite 8 ohms, but it's close enough for a speaker tolerance. Now this multimeter also has a continuity check, which will check to see if there's a break in a line. If you set it to continuity and touch the leads together, it will beep. Or to check a fuse. In this case, this fuse is good. Continuity could also be used for checking traces on an existing circuit. In this case, this trace from here to here is good. Okay, now it's time to check amps. And in this case, this multimeter has two ranges, 200 milliamps and 20 milliamps. Now checking current is a little bit different than all the other settings because the probes have to go in line in the circuit. For example, here I have a small computer fan powered with a 9 volt battery, so we'll get that running. In order to check the current draw of this small circuit, our probes need to go in line on one of the wires and complete the circuit, so we can take a measurement. So we'll cut that wire, and then using a set of alligator clips, which by the way are handy to always have some around, we are going to hook up our probes in line in this small little circuit. Switch the multimeter to 200 milliamps and plug the battery back in to start the fan. And you can see this little circuit is drawing about 100 milliamps. In addition to these common functions, a lot of multimeters have additional functions and settings, like for checking a 1.5 volt or 9 volt battery, or checking temperature. As long as you have a multimeter with a digital readout, you're gonna be good to go for any DIY project. If you missed any of my other Kip K tips, click the end cards on the screen to check those videos out. More Kip K tips next week. Thanks for watching.